Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, thanks for joining me today again on the, uh, the lockdown. Um, and today we're going to talk about the pentatonic scale once again, because it's a cool thing to talk about. So the first thing we're going to look at is, uh, well, first thing, thank you once again. We have a PDF in the Dropbox. It's a similar ones that we've been doing before, which was the A minor pentatonic scales, right? So um, if you want to take a look at that, you can just click on that, and we'll see um, what scales, just fingerings for A minor pentatonic, which you already probably know, and how we're going to use them as in modal context right now. So the first thing we're going to do is going to just jam a little bit. Okay. A minor jam again. Mistakes are free, clams are on, on the house. So <laughs> um, let's talk about the pentatonic scale for a minute. We've been doing this for a few days now and hopefully, or a few weeks now, and hopefully everybody will um, be, um, be digging on what we've been doing. Digging on what we're doing. So these are pentatonic scales used in a way that doesn't necessarily sound bluesy, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do for a minute now, um, I, since I jammed on this, this vamp uh, before, I'm gonna jam on one, and then we're going to go deep into it for, for just a second. So let me play this track. And it's a D Dorian track. And this will line up with all the pentatonic scale fingerings you have here, the A minor stuff. And so I'm going to do a little review. I'm going to use some four note groupings. I'm going to use some different um, pentatonic stuff here. So check it out. It's a nice tempo, too. Okay, 
Okay, so we talked about last week connecting them with those four note groupings. I'm sorry, I'm going to be in D minor for a moment, so just bear with me. So the idea of connecting the pentatonic scale in these four note groupings was really huge for me, as we talked about last week, and you have them again in that PDF handout. I'm going to move it to D minor. So I'm going to think about... And we talked about last week about seeing these little kind of chord ideas. I can do two notes, just any two notes from the scale as I go through it. I'm seeing everything, how it moves on one string at a time, right? So for D minor. Now, if I want to put this together in a modal sort of context, what we're going to do is look at three minor pentatonic scales that we can use to get some cool modal sounds. So the first thing, let's talk about a mode without getting too deep into everything like that. But um, the first thing is D minor pentatonic will work uh, over a D minor vamp. So my two chords right here are going to be D minor 7 to G7. I'm sure a cool little fingering is kind of fun. D minor 7, I'm just playing a D with my second finger, C and F. Then to so bring it down to G7, I'm just going to put my first finger down and get that B. So this is really cool. You hear it in funk a lot. That kind of move, right? And the upper version of it here. Kind of move right there. So I'm playing D minor 7. Then I bring down my pinky 1 fret to a G7 chord. All right, so D minor pentatonic. Let's talk about the notes for a minute. We just have D, F, A, sorry, D, F, G, A, C, D, F, G, A, C, D, and F. Now, if you look at the two chords that we have available, or what we're playing over, it's playing over to a G7 chord. So it's D minor 7, which is D, F, A, C, which is contained in D minor pentatonic, which is D, F, G, A, C. So D minor pentatonic contains D minor 7, pretty straightforward. And then we go to a G7 chord. Now G7 is spelled G, B, D, F. And we have this note, B. It's in the chord, so it's a really great note for us to play in the scale. But D minor pentatonic doesn't have that. So a D Dorian scale, which is the proper scale for this, is spelled, it's the same notes as C major. So we have uh, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So that kind of sound, you've heard that a million times, really big on the jam band thing and Santana. So let me just jump over that track using, thinking Dorian, which would be the, the parent scale of all this stuff. So let's go play Dorian, D Dorian, C major. I'll play the scale. So it sounds kind of happy minor, we call it. Um, Breathe by Pink Floyd, Any Color You Like by Pink Floyd, Great Gig in the Sky by Pink Floyd, uh, Shine on Your Crazy Diamond by Pink Floyd, um, Down by the River, Neil Young. Uh, so I'm just thinking of, those are little older references. Miles Davis, uh, So What? And that whole sound. Right, this Dorian. So we have this note, this is our natural six. And it's just this kind of cool sound. So we kind of call it like a happy minor or a jazzy minor. So um, this, yeah, so hang on here. So we're essentially in the key of C major, right? So C major has three minor chords in it. I'll tell you what they are. So C major is one major, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. Back to C again. So our three minor chords are D minor, E minor, and A minor. What's really cool is if we take those three minor chords and we can use their related pentatonic scales over this vamp. Okay, so I can use a D 
D minor pentatonic, E minor pentatonic, and I can use A minor pentatonic. Now, if we put those all together, okay, D minor pentatonic is spelled D, F, G, A, and C. E minor pentatonic is E, G, A, B, and D. A minor pentatonic is A, C, D, E, and G. If we wrote those all out starting on D, we would get D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We would get a D Dorian scale. Okay, so this works for any mode and any key. If you take the three minor chords and uh, minor pentatonic scales and spell them out, you would get the mode you're in. Another way of looking at it is that there's three modes contained in each pentatonic scale. Sorry, three pentatonic scales contained in each mode. All right, I don't want to go too deep in the modes because it gets a little, a little heavy here and there. But we're basically what we're doing is we're playing a D Dorian scale, but we're thinking pentatonic, and as a result of doing that, I end up playing sort of differently. Um, if I play, I find if I think about a mode, I end up playing very modally, right? I, you know, I think I sound very scaly in a way. I mean, for lack of a better word. So I'll show you the difference. So here's like a modal sound, which sounds great. Right? But if I'm thinking pentatonic, I'm going I'm to go between A minor pentatonic and D minor. So here's D minor, A minor. D minor, A minor. Let's just stick to A minor pentatonic. A lot of those things, four note groupings, A minor pentatonic over this. That's A minor pentatonic over a D. Sounds pretty cool, but one thing you hopefully will notice, I'm not playing A minor blues licks, right? I'm not playing, yeah. Doesn't work so great. I'm using pentatonic not in a blues sense at that point. It's playing A minor pentatonic. Oh, only. Pretty, pretty cool sound, right? Pretty, pretty cool sound. So, um, I'm using notes of D Dorian, but I'm thinking of it as A minor pentatonic. Now the I can resolve to the A's because D minor is spelled D F A, then C. So the A's a good note to resolve to, but you can also start thinking about resolving to the D's. A minor pentatonic. Think about resolving to the chord tones of D minor. C. Well, there's my G chord. Then I'm going to put the D. We'll talk about that in a second. That sounds different. Now here's D minor pentatonic. Sounds great. Now the A minor. Sounds a little different, right? All right, so let's compare. What is the difference between D minor pentatonic and A minor pentatonic? I wish somebody could call it out, but we're on a delay. Uh, a minor pentatonic and the difference between A minor and D minor pentatonic is one note. E as opposed to the F. So A minor pentatonic is A, C, D, E, G. And D minor pentatonic is D, F, G, A, or if I start on A, D minor pentatonic starting on the A. A, C, D, F, G. So the one note, it's one note different. It's just an E, so you're not hitting the third of the chord. You're hitting the second or the ninth, which sounds really cool. So by thinking about this A minor pentatonic scale, you end up playing differently. At least I do, because it makes me, I 
if I'm thinking A minor and I know I'm playing over D minor, it's just I don't play the same stuff. And it's just a cool different sound. The way those five notes work, there's only one note difference. So once again, let's hear the two. I'll go from D minor and to A minor in the same position, which is kind of cool. So D minor. A minor. I'll say A minor on the one chord. D minor. Mix them up, That was English for mix them up. A minor arpeggio. Cool sound. A minor arpeggio. A minor seven arpeggio. A minor pentatonic. All right. So the third pentatonic scale we could add in is the one based upon the two chord. And right now that would be E minor. So I'm going to play E minor pentatonic and hear that sounds. It's one that takes a little bit of time because it's, it's just one whole step away from your D minor. Let's hear it. E minor. Cool though. I'm not playing, I'm not going. Blues licks don't quite work. So D minor, E minor. E minor arpeggio. Pretty cool one. Nice on that G, we'll talk about that. Now I'm gonna mix all three. A minor, E minor. D minor. Mistake. E minor. So they all sound cool, and if we put them all together once again. We have a D Dorian scale. So it comes down to just thinking about stuff differently. And when I think about these three different minor pentatonic scales, as opposed to playing just the mode, I feel like I play differently. I think I play maybe a little more interesting lines, but um, I can almost change. I'm always trying to think melodically, but these devices or things that you can use to get you into playing something new are really important. So I'll just think A minor pentatonic over this D minor chord or the, the G7 chord, which we'll talk about chord tones in a sec. But um, I just know that if I put the three of them together, I have Dorian, which is a minor scale with a natural six, or it's a C major scale, and you have this B note. So sometimes I'll think modally um, to get a bit more of a scaly kind of sound. It sounds a bit jam bandy to me at times, and I'm not a huge fan of that sound sometimes. So I like to kind of switch it up. So when I think about pentatonics, it, I just feel like I can throw in some other ideas really quickly and really easily. Now. Um, Let's talk about uh, considerations as to like where and when I would use each pentatonic scale. I have two chords. B minor, sorry, D minor seven to G seven or G nine. So if you look at the really only difference between a, D minor seven and G seven and G nine is one note, a, a C to a B, right? So very often on that four chord, Right? I'm going to target that.
right? So, so now, what pentatonic scale contains that, that B note? That's E minor pentatonic. So let's listen. So E minor pentatonic is also G major pentatonic, right? If we want to look at it that way. Well, my second chord is a G chord. It's G7, but it's a G chord. So that, that E minor pentatonic sounds cool. It really sits nicely over the G chord. You have three of the four notes. So what I'm going to do is go from D minor pentatonic to E minor pentatonic. E minor pentatonic on the G chord. D minor. watch. E minor. D minor. E minor. D minor. E minor. Now one thing you have to be a little careful of when I go to this G7 or G9 chord, E's cool, it's a 13, it's maybe not the note you want to resolve to. So when you're thinking E minor pentatonic, you can't necessarily let your fingers just do the playing. I'm going to resolve to a G, B, or a D, one of the notes of the chord, which is already contained in the scale. I might not resolve to the E that much. So that takes a little bit of practice. So I'm thinking about what pentatonic scale to play where. Now I'm going to try E minor pentatonic scale on both and see how that sounds like. so well today. <laughs> it works. It's cool. It works well. Me especially nicely on a G chord because of the relationship between G major and E minor pentatonic. Same scale. All right, now the A minor, I particularly like because it has an A minor triad in it. Just, I know it's only one note different. The difference between the D minor pentatonic and the A minor pentatonic is just an F and an E on the A minor, but I just like the way it sounds. I love that nine, right? And it goes to G13 as one. Really pretty. So it's really playing that up. A minor arpeggio or triad. And blues legs. A minor. E minor. A minor. D minor. So it's, it's a really cool thing to work on. And if you take all the pentatonic ideas we've been talking about earlier, you know, one string at a time, four note groupings, and start to work these out, you get uh, some really nice ideas because you can start to get the freedom of when you've practiced those notes up and down one string and they're just pentatonic scales. And the connecting idea uh, uh, of seeing how those three scales connect is, is pretty cool. And then when you realize Ultimately, I'm just playing a D Dorian scale, which is a C major scale. You're just playing C major. And I felt when I was doing modes, uh, when I started getting into it, and we could talk about modes. I don't think about modes much. I think of them as an overall sound. Like I know this chord progression is Dorian, just from that sound. Right? that a million times that is so that is dorian that sound right there um oh yeah coma va by santana uh moon dance um one of my students had sent me some fish song that he was working on and asked me like what what key is this what mode is this and it's, it's dorian and then that really kind of that happy minor sound so it's a natural six now as i was saying before if those we use those three chords based upon the key of D Dorian, D minor, E minor, and A minor, we can use each of those triad arpeggios as well, which is, of course, is contained in each of the minor pentatonic scales. 
So let's play a little triad. So I'm going to play D minor, A minor, and E minor. A minor. A minor triad. E minor. D minor series, D minor. How about A minor? E minor. E minor. A minor. D minor. A minor. So they have these really cool sounds. So you can start to think about triads, which we'll certainly get into, which is one of the most important things uh, to talk about. Now, if I want to talk about something like my, my True Fryer courses, uh, I talk about this stuff a lot. So I'm thinking about the modes. Well, no, I'm not. I'm lying. I'm thinking about the overall sound I know is in D Dorian. I think about the key I'm in. I'm in D Dorian. But I'm thinking also always about chord tones and in triads. So the, the reason why some of these lines that I'm playing uh, work is because I'm resolving to the right note at the right time. And that's super important. And that takes some practice. And you want to think about what chords you're on when and where and then apply and work on that. Like if I'm going to play A minor pentatonic, uh, well, D minor is spelled D, F, A. So that's cool. I got a, I have an F in there. That's, an, I mean, the A, excuse me, so I can resolve my A minor pentatonic. Um, e minor pentatonic has an E in it, which is uh, not in either of the chords. It sounds like it has a D in it. And that sounds great on the one chord, and it sounds great on that G7 chord. So you start to write, if you write these things out on a piece of paper and then target some notes, it's going to make a big difference in the way you see this stuff. Um, and then I just found it's cool. Now, how do I remember this? All right, you're on a gig and you're like, I want to use that thing Jeff was talking about. And I know we're in Dorian. Hopefully, you know you're in Dorian. When in doubt on a minor tune, play Dorian. Like usually jazz tunes, if you have a minor chord that's kind of floating, it's going to be Dorian. Most funk jams, if they're minor, it's Dorian. Um, so you're pretty safe grabbing that one. So it's a little easy trick uh, that helped me in the heat of battle when I started learning this. So we're basing it upon the one chord, the two chord, and the five chord in D Dorian. So if I just look, there's my root of my pentatonic scale, number one. There's the root of the second pentatonic scale that I want to use, which would be E minor, and I go up a fifth, or I go up a fourth from there, and there's the root of the A minor pentatonic. So I have this little shape. Right, so there's my one, my two, and my five. So and I could just do it simpler. That sounds a little Eric Johnson, let's hear that. D minor, E minor, A minor. It's pretty cool, right? So just by messing around with those pentatonic scales in that way you're coming up with some Really nice ideas. So, one, two, five. And where does that work root on the fifth string? Because you're on a gig, you want to think about this. One, there, there, sorry, that's wrong. One, two, five. Or you could do this, but that's another way of looking at it. So if you think about that, D minor, E minor, A minor. And of course, you want to do it in one position. That's the smoothest thing, uh, transitionally. So if I'm thinking D minor, A minor, E minor, A minor, D minor, A minor, E minor. Put them all together, D Dorian. But you want to see them on top of each other, because that's you don't always want to go, you know, you know D minor. E minor, A minor. It doesn't it doesn't flow that way. So you want to see where they, they live on top of each other. All right. That's how you can navigate a modal vamp and D Doran using uh, D uh, minor pentatonic scales. All right. So questions, hopefully. Um, first things first, what I also want to talk about is uh, thank you to everybody who joins me here. We got a lot of people online again tonight. Thank you. 82 people. It's fantastic. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Um, uh, there's a tip jar. You've been people have been, everybody's been really generous. Thank you so much for all the help that you've uh, sent my way. It frees up doing the time to be able to do this. And um, the, uh, 
also, uh, True Fire courses. I think we've talked about this. Um, that's a great way if you want to help me continue to support me to do these kind of things. Uh, the True Fire courses are a great source of, uh, of income for me, and you can get those through my website. Uh, all the info is here at jeffmackerling.com. If you buy them through my website, we as artists make a larger share. And True Fire is the greatest people in the world, are the greatest people in the world, but it really helps us a lot when you buy it through our sites. So there you go. There's my pitch. Thank you very much. All right. So, um, any questions? Let's start going and see some questions. Um, all right, hopefully, okay. So I got to squint. Sorry, guys. I, just, I do this every, I, I should look at it on my phone, but then my phone closes out and blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, happy minor, yep. Do you have your shorts on? Oh, that's Phil, Phil you're talking to somebody else. Like you're having a conversation, okay. Um, Okay. Questions? Anybody got questions? Okay. Um, that Phil's doing that for me here. I love seeing all the same people showing up. Thank you so much. Um, all right. There's no, no real questions. Okay. Very diplomatic in a jam band. Is this what John Schofield does? Yeah, sure. Definitely. Schofield does this... Um, Coltrane, uh, David Grissom was on the other day on the Saturday chat, and uh, he does this. And we were talking about that. You can do it in any mode, in any key. Um, you just figure out what, what, if you're in A minor, some of them work better than others. You know, um, if I were to play it over like that Stairway to Heaven jam that we've done before, uh, stylistically, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't work as well. So you, I find it works beautifully. In, in Dorian. It, it'll work in Aeolian, where you just use the same three chords, and, but I just don't like the sound as much in that situation. Maybe I'm just not ad adept at doing it or something like that, but something like Dorian, and I just played at the beginning track, it was an A Dorian, so let's hear that for a sec. So let's, oh yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna play an A Dorian. So what are, what is A Dorian? What mode is that the same as? And that's that lockdown jam in A minor. So A Dorian. That lockdown jam is the same vamp, just a little different feel. Right? Phil's telling me a lot more questions, okay. You know what I'll do? I'll look at my phone. Thank you, Phil. Okay. That's that sound. So I'm going to just play this one more second. So what are my three minor pentatonic scales for A Dorian? Well, let's use the idea. It's going to be the one on the one, A minor, the second, B minor, and then the fifth, and that's going to be E minor. Let's hear that sounds. So, A minor, B minor, and E minor. B minor. E minor. A minor. E minor. E minor. Now, now, hopefully musically. E minor. E minor arpeggio. B minor. Minor for two note, four note groupings. Now, you notice when I went to A minor, it almost sounded a little vanilla, right? You're like, oh, that didn't sound nearly as cool as some of those other options. And that's the key, that sometimes the other options just sound way cooler. And you can always bring it back home to a blues lick uh, in an A minor. Okay, I'm gonna look at my phone. <laughs> All right, hold on. Um, it's easier. Sorry. We're doing it live. All right. As some of those other options. As I'm talking here. Okay. Um, 
Okay, Phil, does Dorian only work on the one, two, and five? Yes, that's a great question. Thank you. The, the Dorian works on the one, the reason it works on, on one, two, and five in Dorian is because that's where the minor chords are in Dorian. So for instance, if I were to try to do it in A, Aeolian, which is A minor, right? My three A minor chords in A minor are the same ones, but it, it, uh, no. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I got confused. So I'm thinking about A Aeolian, which is the same as C major. That would be the one chord. Next minor would be the E minor, which is the five, and a D minor. So it's a one, four, five minor, right? So let's hear how that sounds. I don't love it. Here it is in Aeolian, Stairway to Heaven. I'm going to play, okay, once again, to run over the idea, I'm using the three minor chords contained in this key I'm playing in. So the Stairway to Heaven kind of jam is the in the key of A minor. So my three minor chords in A minor, A minor, D minor, and E minor. So let's hear what those sound like, those pentatonic scales. E minor. That's cool. D minor. Even the last chord. You find the note, there's always going to be a sour note. For me, what it is, it's, I use it minor if I use the, the pentatonic scale on the four minor. As long as I avoid that F, the F is really sour until I go to the F chord. What I like about the Dorian stuff is all the notes work. There's no note in there that makes me not want to play it. Um, Aeolian, and here's a little kind of, you know, jazz musician or, you know, uh, tip. That's why most musicians, when given the opportunity, will play using Dorian because there's no sour note, right? So that's a whole other modal discussion, but <laughs> just real quick, I'm going to play a Dorian over a stairway to heaven, except on the F chord. So it's not, shouldn't work, but it does. Watch. <laughs> I like that. I suppose you. It's a little darker. I mean, stylistically, our ears are really tuned for Stairway to Heaven be minor, but in many situations, you can use the Dorian scale as opposed to an Aeolian scale. That's another conversation. And there's Jimmy Page right over there in the book. Um, okay, so questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Phil, is highlighting the questions. Awesome. See, it doesn't stay open on your phone, which just makes me totally crazy. <laughs> and I've got an ad. Cool. Um, all right. Great. Thank you, Phil. Super helpful. Um, Tom and Ed, I figure out what's uh, good by ear based on what notes are you likely to sound best um, theoretically. Yeah. You, okay. It all comes down to your ear. Um, so when I'm playing these pentatonic scales, I'm really just thinking about where... I'm, li I'm thinking music and um, I'll try to play really slowly and just focus in on, you know, hitting a few notes and finding the ones that sound best. And the more you do it, the more your ear is going to resolve to the proper note. And then I'll actually think about a note to resolve to say like the B, which is in the E minor pentatonic scale on the G chord. Cause that's really super great sounding. Okay. Um, uh, Fish, are you playing uh are you playing the A minor over four measures, then D and E? Okay. Um, on the stairway jam or, okay, on the, on the regular jam, I was mixing them up freely on that D Dorian jam that's in the, and the, and the lockout jam in A minor. Uh, there's just two chords and I was just thinking about um, trying them out and seeing which sounds best. I really like the sound of the E minor on that the G chord, which would be the four chord in that Dorian progression. I really like that sound a lot, but it, a lot of it's just kind of fooling around because there's so many common notes between all the chords and it all turns out to be one scale. And it, at the, at the long run, I'm still thinking, honestly, guys, I'm thinking D minor pentatonic. And then if I just think about changing one note for, for instance, all right, if we think about A minor, E minor, there's only um, 
one two note differences two different notes between e minor and d minor and there's one note different between a d minor and a minor but they all live in the same spot and then you know you guys have messed around you're, you're playing around with the pentatonic scale and you hit this note you're like oh that sounds pretty cool i don't know why it sounds cool but it sounds cool there's a reason for it because it's in the scale that you're in and it's also in a, a nicely positioned pentatonic scale that's sitting right there okay um jose zurdo um, so we can use C major pentatonic, F major pentatonic, and G major pentatonic over a G mixolydian vamp. Absolutely. Yes. So I didn't do mixolydian or major, um, but the concept holds true. So that's a great point. So if you have a G mixolydian vamp, you can use G mixolydian is in the key of C major. So you look at your three, you can look at it as major arpeggio, major pentatonic scales or minor. Okay, so G mixolydian is also the key of C, so you could look at it two ways. Here's, okay. <laughs> it gets deep. Suddenly I get pulled down the rabbit hole. Um, e minor pentatonic is G major pentatonic, right? Relative major and minor. A minor pentatonic is C major pentatonic. And B minor, uh, what was the other one we did? I want to get my keys right, sorry. A minor is C, yeah, and D is F major pentatonic. So the three minor pentatonic scales that we have are also relative majors, relative minors of the three major chords that you have, have in a key, right? It's a lot. I, I try to, didn't want to necessarily go down the road because then we go down into modal pr discussions, which are really um, long. And and there's, we can get into another, another breakdowns, another lockdowns. Um, you know, uh, oh, my good friend Jeff Sheets over at True Fire has a spectacularly good course called Street Theory for Guitarists, and it's really great. And certainly, like, you go on and look at uh, Rick Beato's courses. Um, but yes, so there's three, any of the, the major or minor pentatonic scales that are contained in your key, you can use uh, in that mode. Okay. Um, uh, talk about string skipping yeah what in, in one second so um Earl Vasquez uh, do you stop thinking about pentatonic positions and start hearing more intervals at some point yes I do um I do I, you know it's just time on the instrument it's just a, a ton of practicing it really is you know and I, you know it's just work so what I do how I practice this let's get that first jam again so I like the tempo on either of those two, but we're talking about that, that D minor, D Dorian vamp. And I'm just going to sit with D minor to A minor, right? D minor, I'm thinking A minor pentatonic now. I like that E. Sweet. Right, I'm gonna think D minor pentatonic. Now I'm just gonna play A minor pentatonic and just kind of groove on it. Those four note groupings we did last week. Now, why does it sound so good? All the notes are the same except for you don't, you're not playing the minor third, you're playing the, the ninth. Which is nice because you're not always going to, oh. you know, that flat third, blues way, you know. You're not always going, I'm sorry. You're doing, that's a great sound. Last stuff, those PDF, four notes. A minor pentatonic is up and down. I'm just running that scale to hear what it sounds like. Now I would do the same thing with E minor. So the blues licks don't work, right? But more kind of straight does. Four no coupings in E minor. Right? But 
but the blues lick is the killer in the in the, the bad way. Like an E minor blues like just sounds completely wrong, but E minor pentatonic sounds good. So the way I practice is just literally what you just saw me do. I just would put on the jam track and somebody's, I think it was uh, Brad Romans who was saying, uh, do you have a 10 hour jam track? Right, and I would just loop it, you know, just, yeah. And then just beat the crap out of it. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, next is, um, all right, let's see what's going on here. I paused my video and it is, all right, I'll work this stuff out. Um, there's so many options. Um, how do I, okay, this is from Kelly Schatzer. <clears throat> there's so many options that sound good. How do I always manage to find the wrong notes? <laughs> you just got to practice it more. That's all. That's what it comes down to. Look, you listen to me in the beginning of this thing. I was like hitting clams all over the place. First of all, I wasn't really warmed up. I just had to jump on. Sounds like excuses, but whatever. I mess up all the time. It's not a gig right now. And, and I'll just sit there and just try to play this stuff. Just kind of just pound it into the ground. Okay. Um, so I'm looking back here. Um, so James Spazano. So in a major key, you can all use all three major pentatonic scales of any of the chords in that key. Yes. You can do it in any mode to greater or lesser s success. Sometimes, let's say that the stereo to heaven thing, I just don't like the way it sounds, which really probably comes down to I haven't practiced it enough. But I don't, you know, love playing around. I don't love that kind of sound. I mean, I love when bands do it. But you know, I mean, if somebody says to me, you want to solo in something minor, I'm always going to lean towards a Dorian sound. I think it's much, it, it's a cooler sound to me. Um, Okay, Tominette, this might be the big lesson. Yes, I think it is a big lesson. It was for me. Um, okay, I'm jumping down in the questions. Thank you so much, Phil. It's really helpful. Of course, my phone is like buffering for some stupid reason. Um, uh, sorry, guys. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. sorry, <laughs> there's so many questions that's, uh, uh, okay. How do you break down and learn all the scale notes? Do you take a scale a week or combine them a few at a time? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I will take, I will just take one idea. That's thank you. Spectacularly great question. I'll take one idea and just try to work that, you know, because I think, we get so overwhelmed with all the stuff that there is to learn. And I keep on finding this the older I get and it all comes down to fundamentals. So the more I've gone back in sort of time, I think about triads now when I think about pentatonic scales. And, um, so I'll take one idea, like I said here, just right now, I'm just sitting on this thing and I might, first thing I would do, as I've said, is D minor pentatonic over this particular jam. I mean, it's because it's, it's D minor, so get comfortable with that, right, you know? I mean, if you can't do that with confidence. You know, that kind of stuff. You know, the ins and outs of the nuances of playing in a D minor pentatonic scale in a bluesy way. Thinking some modal stuff may not be, you can work on it, but make one day of just, or a week of just really trying to hone in your pentatonic stuff. The simple stuff, like I talked about in a few lockdowns, you can go back on that uh, Ben's vibrato um, and, and sort of an articulation, tweaking notes. And that's something that was really important that you want to get to a certain level where you can do that and sound really musical and then you're fine. And then the rest of the stuff to me is like gravy, right? If you're solid and playing pentatonic over the kind of music we're talking about, blues, rock, fusion-y, funky stuff, pentatonic's always going to work primarily to a greater extent, uh, almost always. And so you want to dig into that first and then say, okay, I've got that. I think I'm pretty confident with that. 
and I still am always working on it. So I'm never, I'm confident in it and I'm competent, you know, whatever it's all levels, but I have confidence in my minor blues playing, you know? So then I can say, okay, let me start to mix some other stuff in, but I still work on the minor blues playing all the time. Cause there's always something great. Like, you know, I have my friends in here, David playing something and I'm like, how's he, how's he doing that? Or Matt or Rob and any of these guys who I'm fortunate enough to be friends with, you know, always, always something to work on. And then I would add in the next scale. I would say, okay, now I'm going to try to just do what I did. I'm going to play a minor pentatonic over this whole thing. And I'm going to try to mix them. So it's like little baby steps. It's when you try to do it all at once is that you don't get any payoff really. Uh, it's a lot of wasted time. And, um, while you're practicing and then you can have like a period of time where you're like oh, the heck with it. I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. But if you set aside time to practice, as I like to say, practice with intent and I have a specific idea in mind and I'm going to practice it for the next hour or half hour or however long I have, it's all I'm going to work on is this. And that's, that's the way you want to practice it, the small idea. And then you attach the other small idea and it starts to become a bigger idea. Yeah. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how do you, okay. Uh, how much did Hendrix use this? I have no idea. It's a good question. I don't know. I got to give him a buzz. I know he's living in France with Jim Morrison. Um, can I have that pedal on top of your bloom film dress that you aren't using it? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. That was, that's funny. I didn't leave that there on purpose. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. It's great. Mythos Molnir sounds almost identical. This is just, you know, I, I have it. And if I got rid of it, I would never be able to afford to get one again. So that's what this is. Yes. So not, it's, how about that? Should I just do this? Like, just have it like that? Um, so yeah, and as my other friends pointed out, I've got the uh, the cheapo com the cheapo uh, keyboard here. It kind of ruins the the fine amps. I've got my with the names of the notes because sometimes I'm playing my piano playing is so bad. I'm like ah. So behind the curtain, my piano playing is horrendous, horrendously bad. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, how do you apply these modal principles across a one four five blues progression? Uh, Ari, how you doing, man? Um, that's a good question. Um, if I'm playing, them, geez, if I'm playing minor blues, okay. Do I have a minor blues? Um, I will take the same ideas, you know? Yeah, they work. Um, I'm just thinking here. Uh, it all works based upon, I'd have to find a good blues track, but it's a great question. It all works upon the chord that you're in. So if, if I'm playing an A blues, which is the one chords A7, which would be part of A mixolydian, so A mixolydian major uh, pentatonic scales would be A major, D major, and E major. I can use all three of those because it turns out to be A mixolydian ultimately again. Where this can get you a little into trouble. Oh, and then I can do it on the four chord. Four chords D7. So my one, four, five major or uh, pentatonic scales would be D major, G major, and A major. And then I could do it on the five chord. The, the problem that you encounter, and the reason why this stuff, I should preface this, there's not a lot of changes going on here, and when you enter blues, you're changing keys three times, essentially. So it can be a little problematic uh, in the sense of how fast the tempo is and how you're approaching it. You can certainly do it, and it sounds great sometimes if you have a little more time. Now here, I'm not changing keys at all. I'm just sitting in D Dorian or A Dorian for the first jam. So I have plenty of time to kind of work these three ideas. Uh, if you're playing a slow blues and you're vamping over a G7 chord, yeah, you can start to mix up some of those ideas. Um, the faster the tempo and the more changes there are, the less I like to have, the less, I don't say options I want. I, I, at that point, I start thinking about the chords more, you know, the actual chord changes and, and making those, as opposed to, I can play this pentonic and this and this and that, if there's keys changing, and I get a little crazy. Um, but uh, a good friend of mine, Chris Amilar, a spectacular guitar player, uh, he'd all worked out, you know, giant steps just using pentatonic scales. This is how you can cut the changes in giant steps just playing pentatonic. And what I didn't understand at the time, what he was showing me was I was trying to play them like blues licks with those. 
So I, I'll get him. Maybe we can get Chris on the show to talk about that. That'd be fun. Cause he's a great guitar player. Everybody should know. All right. So that hopefully answers that question. All right. It's a great question. And, uh, Keyboards are your department. Yes, I know, Phil. Um, all right, let me look back. Any, any other questions that I've missed? Um, can you talk about st string skipping? And this is by, uh, this is from uh, Richard P Pigeot? Pigeot? Okay. Um, well, if we talk about string skipping in A minor pentatonic, if we look at our handy dandy handout there in A minor pentatonic, the first thing you do is take position number one, right? A minor pentatonic. And all I'm just going to do is skip a string. It's a good picking exercise or legato exercise. Yeah. That clearly you have to practice more. Then next position. So let me go back to uh, that A minor jam because we're in A minor. Okay, so I'm just going to do what I just did. And it's how I would practice. Right? That's a tough one. That position's tough. Uh, I messed up. Okay, so you can see, you know, this position's tough because you've got the, the position change. So some of them are going to be trickier than others. And I'll just pick an idea like that. Other things you can do, um, really fun kind of like fingering games that you can do. I'm just maybe going to go uh, my high notes, my low notes, next string to the higher notes. So I get kind of like a, a zigzag. It's a cool sound. Oh, there's opposite. That's a challenge to pick, you know, because you got to go all the way down on one pick stroke. But the idea, just I took an idea of a shape. All right, so those things are really kind of ways to explore different sounds of the pentatonic scale as well. All right. See any more questions? Um, Um, how do you break this down? I got all that. I got that. Um, I talked about the one, four, five. Um, can you give an example of more outside playing? Uh, sure. Um, in, in a bit. Um, okay. Uh, it's a whole other can of worms, the outside playing. Um, one thing you just think about, which is always the, the, there's cheapo ways of playing out a little bit. You know, you can just play the pentatonic scale a half step above. Those things can kind of work. Um, not kind of the way I like to think about it, but... Right? The trick to that kind of stuff um, is, is practicing it and... Excuse me, being able to get in and out of it smoothly. Um, so, you know, you know what I'll do? I'll just we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, plenty of ways to play over out. I need to take a drink to play out. Um, I just, I, yeah, I'll get into that in another one. It's a great question, and I love talking about guitar, but that'll be a whole other hour, and it's another great. Uh, lockdown session. But the first thing you do is just try moving a pentatonic up a half step. It's a little cliche, but it's a good way to start working on playing out. But it's a matter of how you place it. It's about the, you know, 
anything will work as long as you phrase it properly and end it right. And that's the real trick about playing out. That was a really skirting that question a little bit, but <laughs> okay. Um, how do you work on phrasing your pentatonics? That's a good question. And can you use the modes in a minor blues? Yes. So, okay, so fishy fish. Uh, how do you work on phrasing your in your pentatonic? Like anything, like I said a little earlier, I'm going to play a particular idea, and I'm going to just work on maybe phrasing, just um, a melodic idea, that four-note grouping. Once again, let's go back to that. How can I phrase with that? Let's pick a rhythm. great, right? So a little uh, melodic phrase, sequence. So little melodic phrases start to work, develop phrasing for me as well. And, you know, the biggest thing about working on phrasing is just learning, listening to other people, really digging in and learning some other people's stuff and trying to copy it. And if you like the, the way, you know, B.B. King phrases, then learn a bunch of his solos and you can start getting into unraveling some of that mystery as best as mere humans can, you know? So, um, all right. So, and can you use the modes in a minor blues? Yeah, that, that starts to be a modal chord, chord, modal conversation, which gets a little deep. But yeah, um, if you're playing an A minor blues, I would use the Dorian of, each of the three chords. If you, if you have an A minor, D minor, and E minor, which would be the one, four, five, and A minor blues, you could use the the um, the Dorian of each of those chords, and I would, and you can do that applying the same idea, but over three chord changes. So, you know, that's a lot of that's a lot of thinking going on, um, which can be cool, or it can just completely screw you up, <laughs> depending on how confident you are with it. Um, okay, so uh, some people are commenting. So here, is, thank you, like, uh, this is the my good friend, Ermano Bonifazi, who's been uh, invaluable in, in setting up the audio and the video with me right now. So hopefully this is streaming as high def as humanly possible. Um, and the audio too. So this is, it's pretty great. Um, I'm really happy with with the way Things have moved. And this is your help as well, guys. Some of the, uh, the the donations that I've gotten has helped me get this to this level. Okay. Um, how can someone stop reverting back to the same old licks in a jam? Um, stop playing the same old licks. You you want to practice not playing the same thing, which is sounds like a stupid and obvious answer. Always play. You know, if you got a jam coming up. Do, practice over some of the tunes that you assume are going to uh, be in the jam, right? And work on them. And then at home, work on them and work up some ideas that you're, that you're, um, that they're, you're thinking about, right? So you, one, one of the best advices I ever got in, in college, it's a standard thing in, in, I went to music school, I went to Berkeley, was uh, one of the assignments was always you had to compose a solo. So if you have like a 12 bar blues, one of my assignment was to compose a solo. Uh, and then when you compose the solo, which I still sometimes do, um, I don't end up playing the same old stuff because why would you? You have time to compose it. So if you start to think of new ideas, work your way through it, and then um, those licks that you worked on for your new solo, learn them and they become part of your vocabulary. And what I mean by your vocabulary, I mean your vocabulary because you came up with it, right? And then it's just a lot of patience. Now, gigging is rough because, you know, you don't know what you're going to come up against and you're nervous. And I feel like I, uh, I revert back a little bit sometimes on gigs until I'm really comfortable. And that's one thing you really have to be really, really cognizant about, God, man, and everybody, myself included, is, you know, sometimes don't be too hard on yourself. If you're just getting up at a jam, maybe you had no time to warm up, you're just walking up, you had no idea what's coming your way, and it's your one time to shine every three months on a stage, that's a tough order unless you're super comfortable with it. If um, you've been gigging your whole life and then you walk up on stage and you're like, great, you know, fine honestly guys you know 
I get more nervous on these things sometimes than I do on a gig. Actually, all the time I get more nervous on these when I have to play than I do on a gig. So, you know, um, yeah, that's an important thing because I hear, okay, why I feel nervous on these things. It's just, I don't know how I'm going to play today. I didn't get much chance to warm up. My, my mind is often thinking about the technological angle and I'm not giving excuses. I'm just trying to get into, I don't so much care anymore because I know I can play and you want to hear me really play, go to a gig and on a record or whatever. Um, that's just age. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, all right, it's not on today. Okay. I'll live. Um, and, uh, but stepping up on a stage cold or you're in a jam and you're nervous and you're waiting for your time to get the call up, you know, go easy on yourself. If you have a great night, great. But if you feel like, yeah, that was okay. Then you did great. Cause it's always almost always better than you think it is. But when you want to try to get out new ideas, you want to, they don't just come out on a gig. You have to practice getting out those new ideas because you have to practice those new ideas or else they won't come out because you don't have them, right? It's a language. So the more comfortable you get by practicing the language, if I wanted to learn how to speak, you know, Italian, which I would love to, um, I have to practice it. I just couldn't suddenly go to Romano in, in, in Romano's house in Italy and, and start speaking Italian, expect me to have anything under my belt other than uh, saying thank you. And, you know, unless I practiced it. So a gig, it is absolutely no different. You have to practice the ideas, uh, be prepared for what you're going to walk into. Look, and then there's a lot of it. Like it's this experience. If I go to a blues jam, I'm not worried. I'm like, Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll be confident, like self-conscious, like hopefully it feels good. Hopefully I play my best or blah, blah, blah. But I, I have a, a degree of freedom and experience on that. If I'm walking into a jazz gig, which I haven't done in seriously, like ever, like a real jazz gig, it would be a very different thing. And if I knew I were walking into a jazz gig, I would practice the heck out of this stuff ahead of time. Um, composing ideas and lines, not to just play a solo that I composed, to just get the ideas under my fingers and then practice. So when I go on stage, I've, I've been, I've been, the stuff's been marinating and I have a few ideas in my head. Never try to play a composed solo on a, on a gig. Like you're just kind of stepping in on don't that's, if you mess it up, then you're, you, you know, you kind of go down the rabbit hole. You go down the, the whirlpool. If you're in a Pink Floyd cover band, well then yeah, you got to learn the guitar solos, but that's the part of the job, right? So you've learned the solo verbatim, but if I'm going to improvise, um, my composed solo on a blues, uh, I'll, I'll uh, maybe use some of those ideas. So improvisation is, is largely based upon memorization. And, and then don't ever sell short the comfort level on a gig. I call them gig chops. So it takes a little while for me to get them back up to speed. So, all right. Hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> um, Okay. Well, um, thanks for the compliments. I'm really appreciating how this is coming through and, uh, really thanks for being here. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Robin just said at one of his clinics about playing live, everybody's playing stuff they've played before. Absolutely. I am not making new stuff up. I may not have put it in that order before, but it's not new material. Um, can you use the Phrygian dominant scale in a blues way other than, okay. Yeah. I don't want to go down that one. Okay. Phrygian dominant. Can I use that in a bluesy way? No, <laughs> I think it just ceases to be bluesy at that point when you start getting into that sort of sound of, you know, there. I mean, playing anyway. You know, that's the sound. Yeah, and the blues. I don't. I don't ever think that way. I'll have to think about the chord changes. Um, one of my other favorite comments that Robin always says, and I know what he's talking about. Not afraid to be a fool. That's one of his favorite comments. And it's this is the same thing here. Like I'm not afraid to mess up or try something new on a gig. If it doesn't happen, uh, you know, I'm not gonna. I know how to play. So I'm, I'm always going to be at some level of competence. And sometimes I'll just go for something. I'm not afraid if it messes up, then I, then I messed up. It's what, um, 
for me, it is why I try to do this. I just love the creativity and creating a moment. And I've had that conversation. David was talking really great. The interview with David was, was fun because we talked about the sort of musical spiritual thing. And it's one of the greatest things I've learned from playing with Robin is it's always about creating a moment in time. And, um, when you're in it, it's the greatest thing in the world. And that, that's the point where you just have the trust of the other musicians, you trust them, and you just kind of go for it. So I'm not afraid to hit a, a clam because if it was in the moment, I don't care. It's almost like a little bit of my, my as, as you know, a whinge, as, the, as they call it in Scotland and England, is sometimes with YouTube and Instagram, everybody expects perfection at this point. You know, you, man, how many times did they, did they when you see this Instagram video, how many times did that person record that thing? Like that's a composition that they're at home filming it. And there's nothing wrong with it. But what happens is it, it sometimes, excuse me. And just like the, you know, when people had sped things up, it's like this crazy expectation that is very antithetical to the way I view music. It just makes me nothing. There's no excuse for not having technique and, and knowing you're and being competent on your instrument and all that. But, you know, you play the way you play and you hear music the way you play. And I'm much more um, attracted to the guys who have a, a musical, something to say. And so sometimes, I know it, I don't want to sound whiny. I, I have the utmost respect to the guys with the tons of chops. But it's just, it doesn't do it for me. And it does sometimes create for all of us when we watch some of, some of these kids on Instagram. I sound like old guy. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like old guy. But sometimes you find things, some of these things aren't really real. And then you're like, ugh, oh, like... What's it doing to people's psyche about this? Like, oh, if I can't play like that, and I fall prey to it too, I'll see these you know, these guys on Instagram go, what? Like, how is that even possible? I don't even know how that's possible. And then the guy who I'd rather hear anyway is is Jeff Beck. And so and I, I just remind myself of that and go, oh. And, and Julian Laws, you guys see that video Julian Laws just posted of him playing that, I forget what tune, he's playing his gold top, and that guy, wow, okay. That's an aside, but something like that. Tons of chops, unbelievable facility, but using everything in a super musical way. All right. Um, hey, what's up, Mr. Williams? Uh, Five Watt World, thank you for checking in. Uh, once again, yeah, for all you guys, I did a, uh, Keith was super nice enough to ask me to do a, a Clapton sort of sound alike thing for his history of the JTM 45 and the Beano record. Um, and it was funny, like I was going to go on a little tangent here. I um, went on the gear page, which I, I don't really so much uh, do anymore. Um, and it, people were like, yeah, that record, I don't know, I don't get it. You know, it's just, there's nothing, I don't know why anybody would want to listen to that. And, um, you know, like my heart goes, you know, I can't, what? You know, I don't, I, I can't understand how somebody could let, not listen to that record and go, oh my God, like this was 1966 right? 65? It was the beginning of everything. So that's uh, my thing. Tell me that what's wrong with sounding old? I, you know what I, mean? I don't want to sound like uh, um, Grandpa Simpson, like, you know, cursing at the, the sun or, or clouds, you know what I mean? <laughs> just, you know, um, I just feel like, uh, you know, the, the, the cool thing about the, my favorite players are, are not those the guys who just try to create a moment. And for me, that is um, what I'm always trying to do. And uh, it's hard to do that at home. And, and once I'm, like I've said before, when you're practicing, you know, you're practicing an idea. It's very hard to create a moment, you know, while you're practicing sometimes because there's no interaction with other musicians. So during all this lockdown where nobody's performing, that's the thing I miss is the interaction with other musicians. I mean, I enjoy teaching and all this and I could practice a lot, but, um, it's that live thing. The reason why you, the reason why I play guitar, you know, I, I feel like I play best live. It's just when I feel like I come alive. Um, and, uh, it's, yeah, it's all about that. All right. I'm, I am rambling. All right. So before I close it out, um, lots of self hating guitar players on the gear page, you know, it, it's just, it's like anything, you know, it's like the internet. Everybody's got an opinion and you know, the expression, some of them are cool. You know, some people have some really great, I've learned some cool stuff from the gear page. I, you know, I, uh, pedals and things I started, I was on there for many years and I, I felt like it was a little less, it was a little more open and understanding back in the old days. And they don't spend their whole day 
given John Mayer or Joe Bonamassa a hard time, you know, which is just blatant jealousy. <laughs> These guys are great guitar players, super successful, amazing, deserve everything they get. They'll just let it go. Who cares? All right. That was my gear page rant. Um, what's the story on your hat? <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I, I like wearing hats. That's the story. Oh, and yes, I've passed 5,000 subscribers here on Instagram. So thank you so much, guys. Like, you know, I really appreciate that. And if you could spread the word and share the love and all that kind of stuff, I'm looking to hope to get to 10,000 um, and uh, obviously and more. But you guys have been really, really helpful with that. And please subscribe if you have not already. And uh, thank you for the tip jar for everyone. And just before I close out, any last questions? You still have a lot of people online. Wow. I really appreciate this. Okay, any questions before I check out? I'll wait a minute before that comes in. It is a nice hat. I like this hat. It is a nice hat. City Hats, and I think it's by Goren Brothers. So you can go online and get that. Um, okay. Right, we're still talking about my hat. All right, once again, real fast. The PDFs, I, so we can go back just... If this was a little over your head today, you're like, I don't know, because this is a lot of information, go back to the pentatonic breakdown number one, or I just talk about what you can do with a pentatonic scale, how you start to break it down across one string at a time, two strings, and this is how I think. It's, there's, there's, this is it. I'm just, this is the inside of what I'm thinking about. Um, and how people are like, wow, you know, you're really fluent with the pentatonic scale around the neck. It's like, well, I've practiced the hell out of it. And the, the, the fluid, the fluidity to move around an A minor pentatonic is like the nights, the notes just light up for me. Like I don't even think about A minor pentatonic. And as I mentioned before, if I make a mistake, it's because I just messed up. It's not because I didn't know what note was the note. So I put in the work, but it was when I started seeing one string at a time and in the four note groupings that everything started to really come together, that I saw these little kind of connecting ideas. Right? And honestly, what I'm thinking is, those are segments of those four note groupings that are contained in the PDF that you can get today. I just started putting them together. Right? And I think we talked about last time, you know, Jimmy Page, you know, that pentatonic scale fingering, the first kind of connecting one you ever learned, or I ever learned, or that he plays all the time and song remains the same. Four note grouping, slide change position, four note grouping, slide change position, four note grouping, slide change position. That's the way I started to see it. So, um, and then, then the second week, I just talked about building chords off of this and seeing other ways to look at it. The key thing I want you to think about as you continue with this, is try to play the pentatonic scales not as blues licks. Just that's that's a cool thing to think about when you're practicing. Like I'm gonna try not to play a blues lick. I'm not gonna play the Albert King lick over this. This is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to play uh, a pentatonic scale as a a device for soloing that does not inherently sound like a blues scale. So think about it that way, and that was really eye-opening. And once again, if you try some of these other modal, these other pentatonic scales, the one, the two, and the five on the one chord for a Dorian sound, don't play blues licks on the four and the five ones. They just, it just sounds weird, because all your blues licks are gonna resolve to the root usually, you know. You know, playing that, you know. Yeah, you know. It's okay, but it's not on the one. Yeah. You know, like those Hendrixy things. That doesn't sound cool on the four or on the two and the five. Okay, so let's see if any more last questions and then I will call it a day. Thank you very much. Oh, Saturday. Thank you, Phil. Oh, man. Okay, three questions. Yes. Okay, Saturday. Joey Landreth. I am super psyched. Thank you, Phil, for texting me in big print. Tell them about Saturday. Okay, thanks a lot. I totally forgot. I'm totally psyched. Joey Landreth will be here. If you are not familiar with Joey Landreth, 
uh, I highly suggest you go check him out. I met him through the, the guys at Two Rock, and um, we actually met him at a gig, and it was really kind of fun, you know. I'm such a fan of his, his everything. I mean, my God, the guys, the singing, I hate him because his singing It's so good. Ugh, I wish I could sing like that. The songs and the guitar playing, total package, and super nice guy. We met at a gig, and, and it, was, it was a fun moment. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm getting, yeah, I love Joey. Here, I get to meet him. And, you know, we have a lot of mutual friends. And he, I go to the gig, he's like, Jeff. And he, you know, it was kind of fun. It's like, oh, you, oh yeah, we know all the same people. I forgot about that. Super nice guy. And he's going to be uh, teaching. He's going to sing a few tunes and talk a little about guitar. And we're going to get together. And uh, Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern with uh, Joey Landreth. And I'm here every Wednesday doing a live stream. And, um, oh, I do want to just something. Some people have emailed me and said, when is my True Fire channel coming? And once again, it will be very soon. I am loading that up. Oh, one more thing. Tomorrow <laughs> at 4 p.m., uh, at, at True Fire, I'll be doing a True Fire live. Um, just double checking the time. Yeah, it's 4 p.m. tomorrow. I'll put it on my uh, Facebook page and all that. I'm going to go live with True Fire. So a similar sort of thing. We'll be talking about my record. I'll be jamming over some of that stuff. And um, it's going to be me and Reverend, what's his name? Oh, hold on. He is great. Uh, blues guitar player over at True Fire. Oh, yeah. Reverend Robert Jones. So I am psyched. I don't know if we're going to be talking together, but we both, he does this for real. I do this kind of stuff as a hobby, but he does it for real. Um, I got into that at one point uh, due to Chris Whitley, who was a friend of mine, um, uh, who is unfortunately no longer with us, but, um, and David Hamburger, who is very much with us and will also be on the show at some point. Um, okay. Uh, is Joey Landreth related to Sonny Landreth? No, he is not. Though Joey freaking Landreth's father, I believe, did some recording with Sonny. So they actually do know each other, but it's got nothing to do with the last name. There is no relationship between it. There's no relations between the two of them. All right, so tomorrow, 4 p.m. on the True Fire channel. Don't miss it, as Phil just said. So it's going to be me and the Reverend. Reverend. I'm just a, such a bad person. Robert Jones. And uh, it should be fun. Um, okay, cool, guys. I really appreciate you coming and joining and hanging out for this long with a lot of little babbling at the end there. But thanks so much. If you have any questions, um, you can reach me at jeffmackerlane.com. I will be launching the True Fire channel soon. I also give private lessons. If you want to contact me through there, we can talk if you want. And uh, please, once again, you know, like and share and, and the channel, and I, I really appreciate it. And thank you once again for the tip jar, everyone. And I will see you Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time with Joey Landreth. I'll see you. Thanks.